Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This has been one of the most requested videos on my channel for a little while and I just haven't got around to making it and I apologise for that but we are here finally. The first and easiest way to really take care of your instrument is to get a good case. Now this one is from, now I always said Gewa but is it Gewa? Somebody help me it's German. <laughs> I have had this case for several years now. I have also got a BAM case, so uh, kind of pitting the rivals against each other there, but I have, that one is an oblong case, so if I'm needed to carry around music and things like that, I use that one, but most of the time I use this one because it is smaller and shaped, which makes my life much easier, but crucially, they are both hard cases. You have to have to have your instrument in a hard case. They are too delicate both to physical impact and also environmental impacts for them to not be in a hard case. Now I know that if you are a young cellist your cello may be in a soft case. Cellos can handle it kind of but I would still say that a hard case is always going to be the better option. Also, if there are any guitarists watching this, you are very welcome. We welcome all types here. But I mean, my uh, my husband has his guitar in a soft case and honestly, it, it, it gives me anxiety every time I see it. Leading on from having it in a good case, think about where you're storing your instrument. Make sure it is not right next to any radiators, any aircon units if you are lucky enough to have aircon in your house and make sure that you never leave it in the car for extended periods of time. Number one, not very secure. But number two, cars can fluctuate in temperature so much. So make sure that you are always taking your instrument out of the car. Plus you need to take it out of the car to practice it, don't you? Instruments don't really react very well to the elements, which is unfortunate living in the UK. So we've got to do everything that we can just to kind of mitigate that. So when it comes to actually storing your instrument inside the case, most cases will come with something like this, which is just a sort of padded, I mean, this one is velvet and kind of a satiny material on the back. I don't use it because I have a very, very beautiful silk scarf that I wrap my instrument in. The natural fibers, this is pure silk, just a little bit better. It's much better for monitoring the humidity and all those kinds of things. You don't necessarily need to get yourself a real silk scarf. The cover that comes with your case will do an excellent job. I just had this one and um, I like it and it's pretty. The next item I have in my case is this very fetching microfiber towel. I'm trying to find a nicer colour one, but this one is just <laughs> the best. On the list of things that are important, that one's pretty low. But this is for wiping down my instrument after every time I play it, which leads us on very nicely to the next point. Keeping your instrument clean is vital. When we play our instruments they get rosin on them from the bow, they get dust on them from the environment, they get sort of a grease and sweat from your hands on them, a bit grim but true. So it is vital that you wipe down your instrument after every single time, repeat with me, every single time. This is so important. The rosin that we use on our bows actually will break down the varnish of your instrument if it sits there. Also, the more it builds up, the stickier it gets, the harder it is to take off and you will actually end up having to take your instrument to your local luthier because they're the only ones that are able to get that off without damaging your instrument. Now when I say you have to wipe down your instrument after every time you play it, I don't mean that you have to spend hours doing this. I literally just mean a quick wipe up and down the strings underneath where all the rosin has gone and then I take my microfiber towel, I pull it through each side and I give it a bit of a clean underneath the fingerboard a bit as well because a lot of the rosin can make its way up underneath as well and then I will take it and I will just clean off the neck and the shoulder and just kind of anywhere that I am likely to have touched the instrument whilst I've been playing it. Also, <laughs> This is something that um, I didn't used to do for years and years and years and then I did it once and it was grim. Especially if you are a makeup wearer. Get the chin rest, clean my chin rest after oh, many, many months of not cleaning it and I don't even want to tell you 
what colour this cloth was. It went on a very hot wash, that's all I'm saying. But that's all you need to do. Just give it a quick wipe down every single time you play it and you'll find that when you come to clean it, your life is so much easier. Now, once a week, I will use an actual cleaner on my instrument. If you take nothing else away from this video, take this. The only things you are to use to clean your instrument are a dry microfiber cloth or a specialist instrument cleaner. You don't use baby wipes. Please, please, please do not use any kind of furniture polish, <laughs> even if it says it's for, you know, wooden furniture, things like that. The varnish that they use on your instrument is incredibly specialist and incredibly delicate. Any other kind of cleaner will strip it and then you have to get your instrument re-varnished and that is not a cheap job. Apologies for the serious note, but please, 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 just, just don't, just don't do it. It's not worth it. The cleaner I use is this one from String Zone. I believe I got this from. I'll have it linked down below. And this was actually recommended to me by my local luthier after I took my instrument into him and he told me off because it was um, kind of grimy. But this stuff is fab because you can use the same microfiber cloth, just dab a little bit on and then buff it in in very small circles and then buff it off with the clean part of the cloth. Wax on, wax off. It's super, super easy. This is really gentle and this is specially formulated for this kind of varnish. So like I say, please, please, please do not use any other kind of cleaner on your instrument. <laughs> Also, when it comes to the bow, we want to be wiping this down every single time because, again, all of the rosin will have gotten all over the stick of the bow. So take your very handy microfiber cloth and just pinch it around the stick and wipe it down. Make sure that you are not touching the hair of your bow at any point because I'm gonna, I'm gonna expose myself here a little bit. That is what starts to happen. Now, this is because I picked up a little bit of a bad habit with my bow hold, which I am now in the process of rectifying, but I need to get a rehair. But that part of the bow now doesn't really grip the strings very, very well. So it is crucial that you never touch the hair of the bow with your fingers. But yes, just give it a quick wipe down. It's all it needs. And again, give the frog a bit of a wipe because it's been in your hands for a while. And then loosen the bow but not too much. Mine is tightened to the level that I would play with it. I just bring it back so that it's just about there. You can start to see that the hair has lost its tension and the bow is nice and relaxed. Now the point that you don't want to loosen it to is when the hair starts to look like this. This is too far. Okay, the problem with this is that if it sits at this really slackened state too much, it'll then struggle to tighten back up again. So don't loosen it all the way, just loosen it until the bow is nice and relaxed, but all of the hairs are kind of in one group still. So the next thing to talk about are the pegs and the strings. Now, if you have a violin, the chances are that you will have four fine tuners at the end here. If you are a beginner player, only ever use these to tune. <laughs> Ask your teacher to teach you how to use the pegs because we need to be very, very gentle with these. When we tune with the pegs, we're moving the string quite a lot. And if you over tighten it, the string can snap and this can be number one, expensive. Strings are the bane of my life, but also really, really dangerous, particularly with the E string on a violin. You want to be really careful because that thing is under so much tension. If it snaps and it gets your face, it's going to really hurt and it could even injure you. So please, please, please be very, very, very careful. When it comes to changing the strings on your instrument, only ever change one at a time. <laughs> Never ever take all of these strings off. If you look through the F holes of your instrument, you will see there is a little post inside. Now that's called the sound post. It's not held there by anything but the tension between the top and the bottom of your instrument. So it is vital that there is still tension across the instrument to hold that in place. If you take all of your strings off, number one, the bridge is gonna fall over and then you have to put that back up yourself, which again, ask your teacher to show you how to do that, just in case that does happen. But the sound post inside could fall over and then you have to take it to a shop or a luthier because they need a special little tool to kind of hook it back up into place. It also needs to be put in a very, very precise place. So never change more than one string at a time. And 
ideally don't change them all on the same day. A string will take a little bit of time to settle and so it will take a bit more tuning and all these kinds of things. So it is just a bit easier to change them one at a time. It also puts less stress on your instrument. Obviously sometimes it's not possible to do and I have changed all my strings in one day before and my instrument has lived to tell the tale. But we're talking about ideally here. So change them one at a time and again ask your teacher to show you how to do this on your instrument so that you can practice with them there. If you have any questions please just comment them down below I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you would like to have a little bit of a nosy into what I actually keep in my case at all times then watch this video here and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!